Hello and welcome back. We have now got the ability in our protected route to reject the response if we deem that it's not authenticated by leveraging those two properties request user and is authenticated method from the passport outcome of its session management middleware. So we've done that work. Let's go ahead and I'm going to remove all these console logs now. I don't think we really need them. We've got a good idea of what's going on there. To continue on with our request handler implementation, if we make it past this if conditional that we've set up here and the user is authenticated, we can then do the work to return the information that it's expecting. So to do this, we're going to simply take the user ID that we get through the session and then we're going to search the, the DB and then send some information back. So to start with, let's just require our DB into the file. We'll create a constant called DB and then we'll import the, the DB class from the file. We can continue saying, uh, we'll say const user and then we'll reference the DB. We can use the, the find one function that's available to us on our DB. If we take a look at our DB just real quick, the find one takes in the user ID. So the way we're gonna get the user ID is on the request, then it'll be on that request user. And if we remember that user is gonna have two keys on it, the ID and the email. And so we can reference the ID here. And as we saw in the, the previous lesson when we were just evaluating the different cases, there could be a case where the request user is undefined. And so I'm just going to use some optional chaining here just to kind of make our code safe. But in theory, we should never actually get to this point because if there is no user on there, it means that the request was never authenticated. So we'll never actually, in theory, make it past this point. But just for the sake of it, we'll just use that optional chaining there just to make sure that it kind of handles the case where the user is undefined and it won't just throw an error. If this DB find one was successful, it's going to either return the user or return false. So we can just quickly handle the case where the user from that DB check is false. In this case, we'll just do a return response and status of 44, and we'll just put on our JSON object there with our timestamp. As a message, we can simply say a user not found, and then for the code, we'll say 404. In theory, we should never really get to this point, like this should never actually be hit, but just in terms of like handling the different cases, let's just write the code to do that. So once we get to this point, our request has been determined to be a valid and authenticated one. We found our user and now we can uh, amend this re response and send it back with the information that we want. So we'll say response.status and we'll give it a 200 okay. And then we'll just create some JSON that we can send back. And we're simply gonna send back the user. So we'll say, we'll create this user object and in here we'll have the ID key. And so we'll reference this user that we, we've we got back from our DB and then we'll just send back the ID. The next key is maybe the email address. So we'll say user.email. And then the last one, let's send back the user's name. And so we'll reference the user.name. Okay, and last semicolon there. No, I think we are in a good place. We've implemented this user route to get some basic information for the user, the ID, the email, and the name. Let's just do one last round of testing to see if this is all working correctly. Once we're in Postman, let's just register the user. Let's test the cases of unauthenticated users. So I'm just going to, without do, setting that login, I'm just going to request information. It's absolutely not 404 or 403 forbidden. Uh, let's now actually do a login to serialize the user and get the cookies back. Once we've done that, we can now hit send. We get a 200 okay back. We got some user information. And so this user endpoint is working end to end now. It will only ever send this as kind of sensitive information back to the client that's requesting it if those cookies are valid. And the only way those cookies can be valid is if they did indeed log in with the correct username and password and Passport and Cookie Session Management has been doing all the heavy lifting for us. And we can simply write a few lines of code to handle the case if a user or a request is not authenticated. I think that's pretty simple and easy to understand and grasp now once the hard work has been done and it has been done. We've now got the ability to, to protect our uh, sensitive API endpoints. Let's take a short break here. In the next one, I just wanted to uh, do some refactoring here just to move this conditional check into our own custom middleware. So we'll do that in the next lesson. I'll see you on over there. Cheers for now.